What a great song, huh? Dry bones. Mm. We're born spiritually dead. We come, we come alive when we're born again. That's what he's saying. He breathes life into our mortal, spiritual life into our mortal flesh. And we start to get on this journey with this uh, walk with the Lord. And it can be quite challenging at times. Especially if we try to walk out this walk in the flesh. No, we can't do it. Can't do it. As a matter of fact, we are in Hebrews chapter 11. I want us to just back up to... We're in verse 15, but I want us to back up to verse 6 because it tells us something very clear and plain. As a matter of fact, in verse 1, it tells us faith, sh faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Okay? In verse 6, it says, And it is impossible to please God without faith. This is a faith one. In every day of our lives, as we grow as Christians, He stretches our faith a little bit more each day through the trials and tribulations in our life, through the blessings. You know, when we get blessed, our faith gets really strong because, wow, God came through for me and our faith starts to grow. And then the trials and testing comes where we're not really getting blessed, now we're getting tested. And now we have to really stretch stretching our faith. You have to really trust me even though you can't understand what's going on and you really think that something bad is happening but really God is working in us to stretch our faith and asking us to trust him in each and every circumstance and he wants us to not use our flesh but walk by the spirit and this is this is where the Christian life becomes a challenge and most people are not taught that this is going to happen to them when they become born again and if you're not taught this then you're going to walk away from it and say, hey, you know what, it was easy to just live the way I was before. Yeah. But see, there's one thing, you can't get unsaved. This is the problem with that. If you try to go back to the way you used to live, God says, no, you can't get unenlightened. You are enlightened now. If you want to go back to that, it's going to be worse than it ever was before because now you have the light of God in you. The very life of God is in you and it's going to be harder to live that way when you have that conviction in you constantly. Mm -hmm. He will call on us back. Yeah. He's a good God. So it's impossible. Now look what it says in, in verse 6. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him. God rewards people when we actually look for Him when we're going through something and actually trust Him. We're in verse 6 of Hebrews 11. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Just so, it, looks, it looks like there's a few perplexed people. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can tell. I'm looking at the face. Where is he, where is he, where is he, where is he at? <laughs> Believe me, I might not say much, but I see everything. <laughs> All right. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and he rewards those who sincerely seek him. When, when you're going through a lot of stuff and you actually seek him in the problem, man, he rewards you and he blesses you and he gives you comfort and he gives you a peace that you can never get any other way. But he stretches our faith daily, especially when truth keeps coming and we keep studying his word, he's going to test us more and more and more. And like I said before, remember, the teacher is always silent during the test. Okay? This is where he's stretching our faith. All right, now we go down into verse... We'll, go, we'll just go back to verse 12 so we know. When Abraham was uh, called to somewhere, another land that he had knew nothing about. And so a whole nation, verse 12, came from this one man who was as good as dead. A nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there was no way to count them. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. As a believer now, the Bible tells you you're a foreigner here. Heaven is your home. This is not your home anymore. As a matter of fact, the more and more you grow with the Lord, the more alien you become here. Things of the world just do not interest you anymore. You just don't want any part of it. They just, not that, 
not anything in you. If God gives us a desire, and we just start to lose interest in things that we used to be very interested in. This is how we know that we're growing. And there's nothing that it's nothing in self-will that does that. It's as we grow and mature in the Lord that th things just start we just start losing interest in those things of the world because they don't provide any satisfaction for us. And this is as we grow. This takes time and it's a process. So don't beat yourself up if you're still, you know, hanging on to some of the things in the world. Because everybody, if God doesn't pull everything away from us right away, thank God he doesn't. Because yeah. we still find comfort in some of the things mm -hmm. that we use in the world. So don't worry. You don't have to, like, imagine if he just pulled everything off of us. Mm -hmm. And you got up in the morning and you had no interest in anything anymore. <laughs> and it's like, what am I even doing here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So he's not like that. He takes things a little bit at a time, and he knows how where we struggle and where we don't. God is a good God. He's a good Father. He's merciful. He's tender heart. And begin every fresh every morning, even when we mess up. He's always there. Okay. That's a fact. That's a fact. He promised he'd never leave us nor forsake us, and I can't tell you time and time again. This is not a feeling. This is this is a fact. God is in you. The moment you believe in Jesus, you cannot lose that. Okay. He is in you. Heaven is your home guaranteed. Your position is locked in. You can't improve on it. Thank God. Mm -hmm. All it took was you to believe that, for you to get there. Now, our condition needs a lot of improvement. Right? This is our relationship with God, and this is our relationship with people here. Okay? The vertical is locked in. We can't mix up the vertical and the horizontal. Or this is where Christians make, well, I mustn't be saved because I'm still walking in my flesh. No, you're saved because you believe in Jesus, not because you live right. Thank God for that, right? But people can't, you can't mix salvation from the penalty of sin from salvation from the power of sin. Two different things. The lake of fire, that's done. We ain't going there. <laughs> Thank God. But the power of sin that still controls the believer's life while we're down here is the sanctification process where we have to walk day and some days I'm up, some days I'm down, some days my faith is strong, some days my faith is weak. There's a difference. This position can't be improved on. This can't. <laughs> this condition we're in has to be improved on. And what our, what our goal is to line our condition up with our position. Okay? When we understand God's love for us in the world, and we start to walk by faith, and when we go out there, what we see is not the reality. The reality is what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. This is what the spiritual life is all about. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because when, when, before you're born again, when you read the Bible, it's just a book. Mm -hmm. And people will say it's just a book written by men. But once you're saved and born again, and your eyes are spiritually open, now this book is alive. Amen. These words have power, and they bring they bring life to us. Mm -hmm. Again, amen for that. Amen. We're born again, spiritually. Now this book takes on a spiritual meaning from Genesis to Revelation. That's why it's important that you read the whole Bible. Okay. Verse 14, obviously these people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. <clears throat> but they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. They knew that there was nothing down here that was going to replace the heavenly walk there. They had faith. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why it is... God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Remember Abraham? Yes. He said, oh, I need a, I want a son. How can I carry on a great nation when you haven't given me a son? And then they went and messed up and they had a son with the bondswoman. Remember? Ishmael. Yep. And God said, no, that's not the one. That was created by you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you something that was created by me. But then God said, I want you to offer him to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I want you to sacrifice your son to me. That's odd. Right? Mm -hmm. 
Look at verse 17. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, however, received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Again, he was quoting Genesis 21, 12 there. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. Wow, imagine Abraham believed that, okay, even if I get to offer him, God's going to bring him back. I don't know how he's going to do it. I trust him. He actually trusted God with his own son. That's how much faith he had in God. That's huge. Wow, huge. That's but we have to think about it. Because God counted him as righteous because of his faith. Because there was no commandments back then, by the way. This was before all that was even given. Before the law, everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Before Moses. Yeah. Abraham was a patriarch. You have to understand that it was he counted as righteous. His faith counted him as righteous. Your faith is what counts you as righteous before God. Not your, not your deeds. Not you acting right and behaving makes you righteous before God. It's your faith in Jesus Christ that makes you righteous before Him. And now, He wants to make you as righteous as His Son through this sanctification process that we live out down here. He's molding and shaping us through trials and tribulations in life, crucifying our flesh, and letting His Son start shining through us. And if you handle it right, you will grow and get better and get more and more like Jesus, if you gripe, murmur, and complain and get bitter, you will only go backwards in your spiritual life. You have a choice. You can either get better from it, or you can get bitter. If you're a bitter, resentful Christian, you really don't know what happened at that cross for you. Because God is working in you. He's giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. But He has to get something out of the way for that to happen. It's called your flesh. He has to get that out of the way for Jesus to shine through. And some of us have very stubborn flesh. <laughs> very thick flesh. <laughs> I'll call it Leviathan flesh. <laughs> or Bohem. You can't get through that. You can't pierce through it. So he has to cause some real pain for us to get to him to get to our heart. All the armor of, of our flesh is blocking him from touching our hearts. Can I get an amen for amen. that? Can anybody agree with what I'm saying? Because I'm yeah, yeah. starting to tell you. Yeah. It's like the ways of the world are ingrained in me since I was raised. Mm -hmm. And God's saying, no, those ain't the ways I want you to have. Those aren't the right ways. Yeah. These are the right ways. Now you have to get rid of those ways. Mm -hmm. And slowly he, gets, he puts us through it and gets rid of it. We don't want to do things that way anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pay back anymore. When I was just a one payback type of person. Mm. And that's, I was raised to pay back. Mm. They get you, you get them back. Mm. You wait for the opportunity. Yeah. Can I get an amen yeah. first? Am I the only one that was like that? No. no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know I got a bunch of angels in the room, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have wings. They're going to fly. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of angels, but they're not all from God. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember, remember there's, there's, there's angels that come from heaven and there's demonic angels too. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they're always flying around. <laughs> I mean, we could be preaching a great message about Jesus and here comes the demonic angel into our mind thinking, yeah, making us right. think of something really defiant. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how you know it's like, yeah. Like a, if you could, oh, imagine if you could just see all what's going on in that realm. No. <laughs> it would be really creepy, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 You'd be like, this might have a heart attack. Yeah, no kidding. My goodness gracious. <laughs> so, yeah, we have to understand these principles. Now, look. Abraham reasoned, verse 19, that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. In a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. Okay, in a sense he did. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's son and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. 
It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that people of Israel would leave Egypt. He already knew that was a prophecy. That they were going to leave Egypt. He didn't see it, but he believed it by faith. He even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left. Mm -hmm. Now, if you haven't read the Old Testament or the Bible, you're going to say, what are, they talk what are you talking mm -hmm. about? And I'm not going to go back there and teach you on that, because listen, there's a whole other thing. And if, if, if any Christian, every Christian, should read their Bible from cover to cover. And if there's a church that's telling you you don't have to do it, get out of it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If they tell you that you have to come to me, no, you have to go to the Bible. The Word of God is the ultimate teacher for each and every believer. Amen. I just help enhance you so you can read it. When you read it, you can get a better understanding of it. Amen. This is a supplement, okay? Every Christian should read the Bible from cover to cover and continue to read the Bible as they grow. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. And if they're telling you you don't have to do that, you're in the wrong place. Because God speaks through His Word. Amen? Amen. Okay. Now we got that straightened up. Now it says, It was by faith that, that Moses' parents, verse 23, hid him for three months when he was born. You remember? The, the father wanted to kill all the firstborn because they were getting too many of them. They were getting too powerful. So we're going to kill them. Well, look what it says. It was by faith that they hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child and that they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. Now, I don't understand. I don't understand how, how they seen he was unusual. I don't know. There had to be something connected there. They said, this, this, this has got to be a chosen one or whatever. Something had to get into their minds to let them know that, which was God. I'm sure he didn't look different. Right. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> they said he was an unusual child. And they were afraid, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, listen to this one, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He knew that that wasn't his, that wasn't his mother. Now look what it says. Now look what he chose to do in verse 25. Now Moses had a choice. He chose to share the oppression of God's people, okay, instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. Mm -hmm. He knew that he could get raised in the palace, he would have become royalty, but he chose to what? Share the oppression of God's people. How about you? Are you willing to share the oppression of God's people or are you running back to the world because you don't want to share the oppression? Listen, all of us get oppressed in this world mm -hmm. and that's why we gather so we can share that. Amen. Amen. We come to church and we talk about the oppression. We don't walk away from it and go back into the world. Amen. That's why we have to gather and belong to a church. And share each other's burdens. I don't know about you, but I get oppressed all the time. Whenever I got to give a message, everything goes crazy in my and the whole day is nuts. Mm -hmm. But I know that's the devil trying to deter me from doing what God called me to do, and He's trying to do that to you too. Mm -hmm. He's trying to oppress you so you don't come to church, so you don't find uh, you don't use your spiritual gifts to, in the ministry, so you don't do any of that. See it? He, but listen, this is very important. What he said here in verse 25 is that he chose to share the oppression. It is a choice. Mm -hmm. Listen, you have a choice every day, okay? To walk with the Lord or walk with the flesh. That's never, that choice is never going to be taken from you. Okay? You have the choice to share in the oppression of God's people as the world gets darker and darker. I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to compromise what God tells me is truth. So I have to get oppressed by it. Mm -hmm. And what? Distressed by what you see people thinking is okay and acceptable. And it's not acceptable to God, it's not acceptable to me. 
And it shouldn't be acceptable to any other believer either. What the Bible says is true, and people are out there just having a free-for-all. Yeah. Yeah. And it's starting to get accepted in the churches. Yeah. And it's wrong. The Bible is our final authority. If the Bible says it's sin and wrong, it's sin and wrong. Mm -hmm. amen. We don't compromise. Can I get an amen for amen. that? Mm -hmm. So you know why? When we do compromise, we don't get the what? Oppression. We don't get what? Ostracized by people. Say, oh yeah, you, you, you Christians, you guys, you, you, you're so rigid and hard. You don't, you, you, you. No, we're not hard and rigid. We just believe what God says. Mm -hmm. And we hold true to it. And that's how you know the world doesn't want truth. The world wants a lie. Yes. The world is believing a lie, and they think that the Bible is a lie. Yes. And the lie is the truth. That's the deception of what? The end times. That's what? That's the Antichrist. Yep. Building a kingdom here without we don't need Jesus. We don't need his principles. We don't need the moral values of the Bible anymore. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. And listen, it's, go it's going to be hard for me to live a godly life down here because everybody's going to come up against that godly life now. Yeah. But I'm not compromising my godly walk with the Lord. Amen. Listen, see this right here? This is the temple. Each and every one of us are the new temple of God. It's a spiritual temple they're talking about. The, the, the literal temple's been destroyed. This is the new temple right here. The new Jerusalem. That's me. That's you. Now look what it says. He thought it would be better to suffer. Listen to this one. <clears throat> he thought it would be better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking ahead to his great reward. It's the same thing. You'll either what? love one or hate the other. The Bible says. You'll either, you can't love God and mammon, or money, or wealth. You can't have both. You'll love one or hate the other. Because let me tell you something. Our rewards are not down here. Mm -hmm. Our rewards are in heaven. And Christians want their rewards here. Jesus said, that's the only reward you'll ever get if you want, what you, if you want it here. Mm -hmm. My heaven is, look, the reward I get for preaching... Is in, is coming, is, it's not coming now, it's coming there. <laughs> well done, my good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. I don't have to hang my head in shame anymore because I'm doing what God called me to do and I'm walking in His plan. Mm -hmm. No matter how many times I stumble and bumble, I'm just doing what God called me to do. So when, when it's time to meet Him, I don't have to say like this, Well, Lord, I know you wanted me to do that, but I just did it. Well done, my good and faithful, you did it. Even though you kept stumbling and falling and hating and crying and ruining all these. Look, you can't come, you can't serve God, you can't wait to become perfect and then decide to serve God. Amen. Then you'll never serve Him. Amen. You can't, nobody's perfect. <laughs> See, this sinful body is just as imperfect as yours. Mm -hmm. God says, you go up there and eat you, it's me doing it. Amen. So I just step aside and do it. Don't ever be fearful of serving God because of your sin. Don't let them get in your way. As a matter of fact, when you start to serve God is when your sins will actually fade away. Yes. Amen. Because you're not serving your sins anymore, you're serving God. Amen. And it starts to lose its power. Can I get an amen, amen. for that? It's called removal and replacing. You've got to remove something bad and replace it with something good, or something bad's coming back seven times worse, the Bible says. Yeah. Now look what it says, verse 27. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the hope, on the one who was invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and the sprinkle blood on the doorpost so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. Remember? Mm -hmm. He says you've got to put blood on the doorpost so the angel of death won't take your firstborn yeah. because the angel of death is coming to take their firstborn. Yeah. Remember, it took Pharaoh's child. Yes. Yeah. Because why, why did that happen? Because what did they do? They wanted to kill the firstborn of Israel. Mm -hmm. Everyone, that's what they tried to do. 
God says, well, I'm going to show you what it's like to lose your firstborn. Yeah. And he, he killed even, I think it was even the animals and everything. 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 God is no joke. You know, you know what it is? Here it is with Christians. We think we get away with something when God doesn't chasing us for our sins. He thinks that we're like getting, we think that we're like getting away with it. Oh God, wow. You know, keep doing it. God is graceful. You know, they use the they use the principle of the Bible all the time. You know when you have a, a, a mortgage, they give you like a 15 day grace period to pay it. And then when you don't, then the penalty comes. It's the same thing with God. He gives you a nice grace period with your sins. He gives you a lot of grace to what? Turn back. Your, God's grace is designed to turn you from your sins, not to keep you in them. Amen. And He doesn't want to have to chasten you. He wants you to just turn from them, see the Word of God, let the eye of the Word of God change, turn you from it, and stop. But if that doesn't happen, the grace period runs out, and then judgment comes. And then the problems come into your life. And you say, why did that happen to me? It's because God was telling you to stop doing it, and you just did it. Just let me just give you a little newsflash. You never get away with sin, okay? It'll always find you out eventually. Choose to sin, choose to suffer. Choose to obey God, choose life. That simple. Okay, let's keep going. It was by faith, verse 29, that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. Imagine. They, they all got through, right? Then they seen the chariots, they were all coming after them. Everybody see the movie? Right, I guess the best picture, I think it was the Ten Commandments. Was that the movie But Moses? Yes. Gave a great picture of what happened. Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston. And he, you know, he waved his staff and the water started parting. And all the people went across and got on the other side. And then they showed all Pharaoh's armies coming in after him. And then the water just going, yeah, and consuming them. Yeah. They seen, listen, yeah. They seen the miracles right before their eyes, and they still didn't walk with the Lord. Well, you know what? We see the miracles of the Lord all the time, and we still choose not to walk with Him. Okay. I don't like that. Yeah, He's God. The human, the human heart is wicked and deceitful above all else. We. Peter walked with the Lord, okay? He's seen all the miracles, okay? And then when push came to shove, he denied he even knew him three times. Okay? He's seen all the miracles of the Lord, so if we even seen all that, we would do the same thing. Because we ain't no better than those people were. Amen? That is just trying to show the human heart how I don't know about you, but God shows us Himself every day. Yeah. The miracles of the Lord. You're up, you're breathing, you can see, you can walk. That's a miracle. Positive. Mm -hmm. Huh? Positive thing. Yeah. yeah. He gives us this beautiful day. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing from God. Now look what it says. When they, they all drowned, verse 30, it was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days. Mm -hmm. How about that one? And the walls came crashing down. God was trying to show them that, look, you can't do this in human strength. He told them to go around Jericho seven times and then sound the trumpets and the walls are going to collapse. Yeah. That's how they won. That's how they got. That's how they won. God gave them the victory. Listen, you can't win victories in the flesh. Christians are just so like thinking that they can do something in their flesh. You can't. These are things from. Anything that you can do is not from God. Anything God can do, you can't do. It's a supernatural walk. Look, an unbeliever can do a lot of things as a believer can do. They can stop drinking and all this other crazy stuff that they do. They can do all that stuff. That's not what God is talking about. A supernatural thing is... 
Lord, I want to walk with you. I don't want, I don't desire to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. You put it right in front of me, I don't care. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. It changes your heart. He doesn't, he doesn't just, it's not, will, willpower is like you really still want it, you just don't do it. Yeah. I can't do it, but I really want it. <laughs> and sooner or later you'll do it anyway, and you'll do it on the sneak. So, the human heart, okay? One thing I don't know, because I got one. <laughs> oh, I'm doing so good. Yeah, right, and as soon as you leave, you're messing up crazy. and telling everybody you're doing good. It's called, you know, it's even worse to become a sneaky sinner. Because now you've got to hide yeah. your sins. And it drives you deeper and deeper into a pit where you can't get out of. Can you get any amen for that? Amen. Oh, amen. You can't hide from God. Listen to this one. Verse 31. It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute. Wow, God used the prostitute? Absolutely. Yes, he did was not destroyed when the people in her city who refused to obey God. For she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Remember? Yeah. She hid them. Yeah. Yeah. And they, she made a deal with the angels. Yeah. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah. David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms and ruled with justice and received what God had promised them. Remember when David faced the giant? Yeah. He said, who is this Philistine that's trying to mock in the living God? He said, I'm going to cut your head off. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have any power to do that. He had God had his back. Amen. And what did he do? He had that little sling, that little rock. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Down he <laughs> went, and off his head came. Yeah. <laughs> little David, who is this Philistine that mocks God, mm -hmm. the God of Israel? And everybody else was what? Scared of him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Saul, the whole army was scared of him. Yeah. Because they weren't trusting God. They said, who is this guy? Right? They put me in the field with bears and lions and protect the sheep and I'm killing them all. Yeah. David. That's how he became king. He had the heart after God, you see? Yeah. He yeah. trusted God. By faith, David had the heart of God. Even though he failed, he was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. If you read all the things that people by faith did, yeah. right? By faith, they overthrew nations, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of a sword. Their weakness was turned into strength. See it? They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. But others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were cheering. Look at how we complain, huh? Mm -hmm. We don't get whipped. We don't get thrown in prison. Mm -hmm. The littlest thing. Right? Right? Standing up for Jesus, right? We, we, what, what is the word? When, when you stand up for Jesus here, what's the worst thing that can happen to you? Mm -hmm. They don't want nothing to do with you anymore. Oh, wow, that's torture. <laughs> You're a Jesus freak. Oh, I can't live anymore. <laughs> this country is so spoiled. That's why our faith life is so weak in this country. Because we don't really have anything to fight for. We don't have nothing. We don't have anything. To, we don't have no oppression. We don't have nothing. Go to those other countries. You mentioned Jesus' name. They put you in jail for 10 years. We're spoiled it, but let me tell you something. The day's coming when you're not going to be able to mention his name. Yeah. And when you do, you are going to suffer for his name's yes. sake. And then you're going to really see who God's people are. Yes. And it's coming. Yeah. When you take a stand for Jesus, most people, Christians that are not rooted and grounded in the word, are just going to follow along with the crowd. Yeah. So, oh, I'm just going to bow down. I'm not going to mention Jesus at all. So why bother? 
Why come to Bible study? Why go to church? Why be a believer? Why do all this, preparing for a battle, and then when the battle comes, run the other way? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I ran with the devil all my life, and I fought battles for him. But I'm not going to fight any battles for Jesus? doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. He's the one who saved me from the devil. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for Jesus, man, I'd be, I'd be smoking in hell right now. Mm -hmm. Still. And I don't know how many times the devil wants to call me back into that again. Yeah. I don't know about you, but the closer I get to Jesus, the more the devil wants me back in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now it's a walk of faith saying, nope, I ain't going there. Even though I feel like it, I ain't going there. Amen? Because I know it's coming. You know what I do when I get tempted? I play the whole thing out. Mm. It's okay. The beginning of it's really good. But let's play the whole thing out if I do do this. What's going to happen at the end? At the, at, at the end of that run? Or whatever I do? Then you'll think twice about starting. Yeah. Because we're so short-sighted, we just, yeah, get that, that pleasure... And then don't think about the consequences that's coming down the road. You make you think before you act. Yeah. Say, all right, if I do this, what was the result the last time I did this? Yeah. Weigh the evidence. Weigh the, that's right, weigh the evidence. That's right. It is for a season. That's right, because sin will give you pleasure for a season, and you'll get away with it for a season. That's just the devil setting the trap. So when you go into it, he shuts the door so you can't get out. Yeah. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. he, sin, it, it lets you get away with it for a while. Oh, I didn't go to Bible, so I didn't read my Bible. Look, everything's still good. And we start to what, drift. Yeah. We're like sheep. We get out of the sheepfold, right? We start going on. The, we get out of the umbrella of God's grace. And we go on into the world. And we start sinning it up. And we think everything's okay. And then what? We get him. Trap set. The trap is set. And, the and shut. there's no way out. <laughs> you know, there's no guarantee once you walk away from God that you're going to make it back here. There's no guarantee of that. I'm saying, you know what? I don't know about you, but I don't, I, I don't want to find out if I'm going to make it back or not, so I'll just stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's the easiest way. I'm just going to stay. Come hell or high water, I'm just going to walk with the Lord till I go home to be with Him. Amen. Amen. It's a lot safer that way. Yeah, it is. Who cares how I feel? I'm going to feel that way when I go back into the world anyway. Yeah. Amen. The world's going to make it feel rotten. Yeah, yes. the world, yeah. The, you get the pleasures for a season mm -hmm. after you get what you want, and then at the end. You're so discouraged and depressed and you want something else. Mm -hmm. We're never satisfied in the world. Go ahead. Go for it. There's never enough out there. That's the fact. Mm -hmm. Right? Look what it says what happened. So, look at verse 36. Some were jeered at and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prison. Some were died by stoning. Imagine getting stoned. Listen. That is the most horrifying way to die, by getting stoned. Yeah. Because you don't die right away, you know that, right? Yeah. You get hit, your body gets hit with these rocks, and they start bruising you. Then you get hit in the head, Ugh. and you just start breaking Steve. open. Yeah. Stephen. Like Stephen, yeah, right? Yeah. It's an agonizing death. Some was sword in half. Imagine. Yeah. Some manuscripts say they were tested. And others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. Mm -hmm. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. These people earned a good reputation because of their faith. See it? Yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us, so they would not reach perfection without us. So look, we're all getting there together. They're waiting on us. All these people that we read about in the Bible, by the way, they're going to meet face to face. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine. I know. It's awesome. You're going to meet Moses and Adam and King David. 
Yeah. And Daniel, Jeremiah, all the prophets. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be like a big reunion. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. You looking forward to a reunion down here? No. Forget it. Don't you get it? Problems of people fighting each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they can't. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah, we really want to. We really want to get together, all right. Yeah, but make sure you leave so, 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 and him home too. Yeah. Make sure they don't come. <laughs> and get an amen for that. The reunion with heaven. Hey, no more sin nature. Amen. You ain't gonna have to tell anybody to stay home because you're gonna want to be with them. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's go on to chapter 12 now. <laughs> this is awesome. So now, it says in verse 1, uh, Hebrews is a great book, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it is. It really is. It's a whole awesome. faith hall of fame. <laughs> that's what that was. Verse chapter 11 was a faith hall of fame. Yeah. All the people are there because of their faith. So it tells us not to give up our faith. Go back and read it again and again when your faith gets weak. Because the world gets heavy on us and our faith gets weak and the world starts to look more real and real and this starts to look less and less. That's just the devil's plan for us. Now look what it says in verse 1, chapter 12. Since, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, that was chapter 11, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Now, all of us have sins that trip us up. That's why it says they easily trip us up. See it? Mm -hmm. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down. You know, um, even in the car world, if they want the car to go faster, what do they do? They make the car lighter. So it will go faster. It's just like you. If you're going to run a marathon, you want to put a 25-pound weight on your back yeah. and run the marathon. Mm -hmm. You'd want to get the lightest shoes you had, the lightest apparel, mm -hmm. and you want to be as light as you could be so you could make the journey. It's saying to strip off the weight that slows us down, things in our life that slow us down from our walk with the Lord, we have to strip them off. So we have to walk. Do an evaluation of our life to see what's going on there. It needs to get, what is hindering my faith life? It's called a self-evaluation. Look what it says. And let us run with endurance the race God, the race God has set before us. See this? When we're born again, we're, it's a marathon now. We're, we're in a race now. He wants us to get to the heaven. We're going to get to heaven, right? And he wants us to get there, and he wants us to strip off the weights so we can get there faster. You understand? Heaven is our home guarantee, but he wants us to experience some of that now. You see? And your sins will not let you experience that now. They're a weight, and they hinder you from experiencing the life God wants to give you down here. Mm -hmm. Heaven's your home. You're going. You're guaranteed. He's talking about... Your, your walk with the Lord, your sanctification, the things that slow you down, the powerful things in your life that hinder your walk with the Lord. Now, how the heck do I do that? I can't do that because I'm powerless. No kidding. <laughs> we can't do it. And it's going to, do you want to know how we do it? I got an answer for you. And it's right in the Bible. And he even tells us, let us run with endurance to race. How do we do it? Look at verse 2. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. There it is. Wow, it's rocket science. What's Jesus? What, is, what does it mean? How do you, what do you mean by keeping my eyes on Jesus? Your goal is to learn more and more and walk with the Lord. When you keep, remember Peter? He said, Lord, I want to walk on the water too. And Jesus said, come. And he started walking, right? Then he walked in the waves and the wind, and he started sinking. It's the same thing with our spiritual life. 
We're not keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. We're looking at the things of the world and life, and it's knocking us off course, and it's letting us sink. Yeah. Same thing. Look what it says. Je now, who, now, Jesus, you, you don't get a picture and you look at Jesus. <laughs> Some people think that's what it is. Jesus is what? The Word of God. This is, this is where Christ, even Christians go off. Instead of just sticking in the Word of God, right? They go outside the Word of God into all kinds of different things to explain the Word of God. Where, no, God wants to explain the Word of God to you. His way, not the way someone else perceives it. That's why you have to go into the Word of God. And don't go outside the Word of God because you don't need to. Let God be your teacher. Not people. And he will teach you. He will teach you as you go through your life and read his word. He will reveal to you the things that need to get revealed to you. You do not have to go outside the word of God to get revelation. Amen. Or to understand him better. That's why, because everything outside of the Bible can deceive you very easily. Yes. That's why it's important to just stick to the word of God. He said, if God doesn't want me to know that right now, maybe I'm not ready for it. I'm just going to stick with him until I am. Can I get an amen, amen. for that? Amen. Don't deviate from the word of God. Now, sometimes, too, people turn around and they have their own ideas on it. Exactly. You know, and that, that messes you all it up. It does, because now you think that, oh, that might be, that might be the right thing. No, no. That's just their opinion. The only fact that can come into a believer's heart is through that word, not through a person. Okay? That's why when we come here, we study the Bible. That's all we do here. Yeah. All the other fluffy stuff doesn't do anything for me. I don't need any of that. I need to, I need to know how I'm going to get through this life. Okay? I can go sing in my car if I have to. <laughs> I need, I, need, I need something to take with me. I need something to enter me so I can, what, fight this battle out there. Amen. Right? Now look what it says. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. What does it mean, perfects it? That's where spiritual maturity comes in. Perfection in the Bible is maturity. You know when um, a tomato reaches perfection? What does it reach? It reaches maturity, where you could actually pick it and eat it, and the fruit is delicious, right? That's where the that's where perfection is, maturity. If anybody plants a garden, they'll tell you, in the little stake, it reaches maturity after so many so many days. Mm -hmm. It reaches perfection. Exactly. Now look what it says. This is beautiful. He's the one. That perfects our faith because of the because of the joy or instead of the joy awaiting him he endured the cross disregarding its shame now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne think of all the hostility he had endured from sinful people remember Jesus he was raising people from the dead he was healing people and he was they were treating him they wanted to kill him he was doing good Think about that. You're going to want to do good in this evil world and they're going to want to kill you. Yeah. When you give God the glory for it. When you want to take glory for it, that's good. But when you say, that wasn't me, that was God. What do you mean that was God? No, that was you. No, that was God. Mm -hmm. When you can give God the glory, believe me, you'll, you'll suffer persecution for that. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Now look what it says. Then you won't become weary and give up. You see it? When you think of what Jesus went through, he went through way more than we go. Then you won't get weary and give up. That's what it says. That's why you have to look to Jesus. Look. And give up. After all, look what it says in verse 4. You have not yet given your lives in your struggle with sin. Against sin yet. We're still struggling with sin. Amen? Amen. And above, now look what it says. And have you forgotten the encouraged word? God spoke to you as his children. He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. 
for the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. He's quoting Proverbs 3, 11 and 12 there. All right, we're going to stop there tonight, okay? We're going to continue next week in, in verse 7. I hope this helped you all tonight on your journey. Yes, thank you. Yes, that was great. It's a good book, now. Really It's good. a really good book. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, God just loves his kids enough to want them to grow. Amen. In his grace and knowledge. Amen? Amen. All right. Brittany's going to come up and sing a song. We're going to stand and worship the Lord, and we're going to close.